Hi folks, welcome to the channel. So, I'm in Donegal. Now, I have to start this video by saying this wasn't meant to be a video. I decided I needed a few days away. I'm looking after my dad and it's hard work. And I just needed to get my head cleared. So I thought I'm gonna go away. Even though I'm going somewhere where I could make a nice wee video, I'm not going to. But I always bring my camera. So that was all right. <laughs> so I arrived a couple of days ago and sorry I'm having to be careful here I'm walking on this which leads to the wilderness now I've been walking for a wee while so I'm gonna have a seat now we're going to get into the video now in a moment so where was it so yes so i always bring my camera with me and i have it with me in case you know in case you see something you want to shoot suddenly but i got a bit bored just sort of sitting around chilling out and i thought i'll just go for a few wee drives and i'm on the wild atlantic way uh, in a beautiful part of Donegal. Donegal's all beautiful, but this is one of my favorite parts. And I remember there was a waterfall, so I'll, I'll go down and have a wee look at it. Flashback. Hi guys. So I decided I wasn't gonna film in this wee trip, wee private trip, but I always have my camera with me. And I was just thinking there driving down where I'm going. I'm going to a couple of places just for a quick look. But they're both places I think would be interesting to see. So I will film them. Whether or not they ever go into a video, I do not know. It's Donegal, by the way, and I'm, it's raining. That's not unusual for Donegal, but I've got my big coat, and I don't even know if I have to walk to these places. And as usual, I'm in a wee tight lane. A wee tight, beautiful lane, I may add. Donegal really does just take your breath away. This is greener than most places, it's not as um, peaty, perfect, I don't know if, that's, if they're real things, right? But it's very green, it's very nice. Look, that's proper farmland, those wee islands. Somebody goes out there in their tractor and farms them. You know, I didn't even know this was here until a couple of days ago. Wild Atlantic Way. You can probably hear what it is already. And I didn't have to walk to it, my car's behind me. Fantastic! Isn't that amazing? of nature. Heading for number two. I sort of feel like I'm talking to myself. Like if I'm not going to maybe put this into any video at any time. But yeah, talking to myself, going crazy, right? Heading to number two, which I don't think is going to be as spectacular, but I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'll not tell you what it is to get there, which is only a few minutes from here. Still on the wild Atlantic way. Wonderful. Oh, 
sih. Makara Beach, which is not our destination, but fantastic looking beach. Like lots of beaches in Donegal, they're massive, white sands and hardly used. Even in the summer, it would just be a scattering of people. Where we're going is up here. end up climbing. No. Fortunately I'm here. Unfortunately I can't get right round to see in properly because the tide's in to a certain extent. And it's too cold to take my shoes off and walk through it. But it's the caves of Makara and they're in there. And I'll have to climb down that to get in. I'll go and see if I can find another way down. There's the mad sheep, no fear of heights. I think there's caves the whole way along. I'm just walking around, I would like to get into one. Huh. There you go. I wonder when that's all due to slip down. It only goes for about another 10, 15 meters. Millions, billions of years in the forming. And so on lines, you think it was built with bricks. In fact, it's <laughs> incredible how it looks. You know, but definitely not man made. I really this time can't get any further along. The tide's in just enough that it's filled up all the areas that would let me pass to go further down. Yeah, the whole area is like that. We'll have to look that up, why it's like that. Or as you know, please tell me in the description. Another of life's marbles. That dark stone, I think I know what it is, but I'm not going to say because it could sound stupid. But I will go as far as to say, I think it's a layer that was formed during a very important part of Earth's history. Again, if anyone knows what it is, and if it turns out somebody's painted it there, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look awful stupid. That's not what it is. So there we go. Makara Beach, Makara Caves. A couple of them anyway. End of flashback. But, but then I just thought I'd bring my camera out with me, and I brought the camera and and ended up filming a bit, as you're going to see, and then I went to another thing, and I said, I can't bring your camera. So I've ended up doing a video, but it's not a normal one of my videos. It's just a chill out, with stayed for a wee short period of time. So I think it's going to turn into one of those videos where it's going to be more looking than talking. And I hope you want that. But I'm telling you, get the kettle up, get a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, a wee biscuit, all ready, even a beer, all ready, and sit back for 10 minutes, and chill out and enjoy Donegal in all its glory. 12 seconds later. Right before we go any further, just realized Agent has his sunglasses on. Not needed. When I started to walk down, the sun was out, it was very bright, it was in my eyes. Alright, onward and upward. <laughs> So, what I'll try to do when I go home, and I don't know how much of a success it will be, 
is put it all together, bit of good music and save your legs. All right, so I've already recorded all those bits and pieces. This is the end. I'm heading home shortly. I'm gonna drive the loop of places that it did so we're gonna do a wee bit of video on for reference and then head back home. So I really do hope you enjoy the video. If you do, don't forget, subscribe, comment, love to hear what you're saying. All right, I hope you enjoy it. Onward and upward. Now, I thought I would take a nice drive and show you some of the wonderful towns in this area. And we're starting off, we're only gonna drive through them, but we're driving through one of the best known towns in Donegal, which is Ardra. Spent many a night in Ardra. Spent many a night getting drunk in Ardra. But quite famous for some things. But most famous of all, and arguably the best pub in Donegal, if not Ireland, the corner house bar coming up on the left it's on the corner <laughs> the corner house bar is famous for one thing in particular as well as its fantastic atmosphere great people it's famous for music People come from all over the place, all over the world I would say, and they bring their guitar, their fiddle or whatever it is, and they take a seat, and it's all free. So you can go in a few nights of the week, all weekend, and buy a pint, and sit and listen to some of the most wonderful music you'll ever hear. And there've been famous people playing in it, and oh, it's just amazing. And it's just another one of those things that make Donegal very special, and it's never changed. If I went into the corner bar now, it would be no different than it was when I was in it 30 years ago. I can guarantee you that, because it was no different when I was in it five years ago. Fantastic. Now, next town, we're only going to a couple, is my favourite town in this area, and it's Glenties. And I'm going to tell you a wee personal story. And, and it's going to end with a, what, what I think is a wee interesting bit. So when I was 17, just started to drive, car mad, my brother-in-law, well he wasn't my brother-in-law then, he was dating my sister, I think he was trying to impress her, but took, his, took me away, and he was a good bit older than me, and we went to Donegal for the weekend. And this part of Donegal, Ardera, Glenties, I didn't know that well back then, but he did. And, well he knew it a lot better than me, and he says, I know this wee hotel, it's a wee old hotel, and they do a great meal. So that was where we headed, the very first place we'd just arrived and we went in and the place seemed nearly derelict, you know, there was one girl working in it and it turned out one girl working in the kitchen as well, running this hotel, nobody staying in it and in we went, my brother-in-law was always great crack so he starts joking with the girl and the next thing the dinner came out and the dinner was for steak and it was fantastic and then he's bantering with the, the girl who was serving and I was bantering too but I secretly really fancied her I don't know why as soon as I seen her I really liked her and she then went and got the other girl who did the cooking so we could compliment her and it was her sister her older sister and one thing led to another Robert figured out that I was interested in in the girl who by the way is called Irene and we ended up Robert didn't do anything with his sister, we just had a great night. They closed up, we all went out. And um, I think I got a wee kiss that night. And I ended up dating Irene for two and a half years. And I would come up to Donegal, well I think it was two and a half years, it may not have been just that long, but it was over two years. And I would come up to Donegal every weekend that I could afford to. And that would be maybe on average every two weeks for a very long period of time and just the best relationship I've ever had in my life. It was so innocent. We wrote each other letters. I still have all my letters, big pairs of them. Like you wouldn't believe the amount of letters. But the funny bit is, Irene lived in a house that was very, very old. 
it, back down there, a river, a famous river called it, in this area called the One River, which is a great fishing river. I'm not into fishing, don't like killing them, but it was right in their back garden. But it was a big old house, and she had 17 brothers and sisters. 17! And she was the youngest. No TVs in those days, obviously. <laughs> which actually isn't true. Oh my god. And when she was 16, her dad was 76. When I met her, she was about, I don't know, a year and a half younger than me and we just had this fantastic, lovely relationship and the weeks that I couldn't come down, we phoned each other. Irene didn't have a phone, their house didn't have a phone. And her best friend lived across the road called Lorraine. I can't believe I remember all these things, Owen A. River and Lorraine, I even remember a lot of her brother's names now. But the friend across the road had a telephone. so. Whenever we had to do it, we all prearranged by letter and organised before I left, if I knew I wasn't coming up the next week, she would go up to Lorraine's house and phone me, or wait, and I would phone her. And if I remember rightly, their phone didn't have a dialing thing on it. You had to get the operator. So whenever I phoned to contact them, I had to speak to a wee operator in Glendy somewhere, or Ardra or wherever. And the wee funny bit they end that off, this is where Irene lived. I'll slow down. I'll stop. It looks derelict. And that house, the fancy looking one, the ones that had the telephone, that's Lorraine's house. I wonder how Lorraine's getting on my life. I met Irene a few years later. I hadn't seen her in, oh my God, like I'm not gonna tell you how many years. But we met up once. She now lives in London and Ach, it wasn't the same, and you couldn't have expected it to be. Isn't that a nice wee story? Right, Glendies, and then off to my favourite coast. You're in Donegal, every town has a big chapel. This is Glendies. On the left, the Highlands Hotel, very well known, and I've stayed in it many times. Ah, uh, the memories. What a lovely town. On the left, the Glendies Hotel, where I met my girl. Looks like it's not a hotel anymore. Ah oh well, times change. Glendies, so many memories, so many good memories. Ah, oh, it was great to be young. thing I always notice when I get to Donegal is the smell. I don't think you're meant to use it anymore but Donegal has an abundance of turf, of peat, which was its main industry for a very, and fishing for a very very long time and it's still used whether legally or illegally and it's just the most beautiful smell. Again it brings back fantastic memories isn't it funny how smells do that but I'm driving along here now and I've been smelling it all day. Now that the cool weather's back and it's just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It must be the only type of substance that gets burnt that, that naturally smells beautiful and we're not talking about incense sticks. <laughs> I'm a wee bit of an environmentalist so I shouldn't really like that but there you go. The faculty, is that a word, of human beings. Donegal is just, it's an immaculate place. Whenever I came through France, I was talking about how immaculate it was, but here, it's more so. You know, every house is immaculately clean and tidy and painted and 
great cars taken and it doesn't matter if it's a very expensive looking house or an average looking house they're all well kept I've been here a few days now and other than very very old cottages I haven't seen any derelict buildings no warehouses or anything awful looking I haven't seen any graffiti there's no graffiti they're very clean people very conscientious about where they live I think it's probably an appreciation of how beautiful the place is Donegal something else I've always loved it and always appreciated it but only at this stage of my life now especially after traveling so much in the last few years do I really realize just how wonderful the place is completely unspoiled in my opinion even the roads the roads are perfect they're just exactly what you would want in a place like this You know, Donegal is a wonderful example of how areas of natural beauty like Donegal, of which are obviously there's many all over the world, should be preserved. And when I say preserved, I mean, the people here lived in, as I said, very, in cottages, but they were very, very, very old, hard to live in cottages. And that's not that long ago, that's from my childhood. So they had to improve, but they've built in unison with the countryside. The Holy Mary, look. Oh no. Jesus, the big fella. I haven't seen a single super modern house, you know these square ultra modern houses and you know they'd be perfect around here so I can only assume they don't let them be built. Uh, actually when I'm coming up there that's that's about the most modern house I've seen today. So they're all modern but they've all got a cottagey look, suit the environment look, a real lesson for other places around the world. Of course maybe that's too late. This is a real walk down memory lane for me. Every time I come up to this area, which isn't very often nowadays, it just brings back all those fantastic memories. I spent so much of my teenage and early 20s coming up here camping and I dated the girl Irene and, and we used to come around the, the, all these wee roads all the time. It's just fantastic. And it's funny in these sort of situations, if cars come the other way or a van comes the other way, you always find a way to pass each other. When I bought my motorhome at the very start of my adventure, a few years ago now, I set off for the first time to drive across Europe. I had a ferry book from Ross Lair and I set off a week early. I wanted to practice in the van. I wanted to be sure before I left the country that everything was okay and everything was working. And this is where I came. And I drove these wee roads in the big van. And I can't remember exactly where I stopped overnight, but uh, right on a beach. Self-sufficient for the first time in my life. Oh, they were exciting days, let me tell you. Something I dreamt of all my life, and then I was suddenly doing it. No responsibility. Life can be wonderful if you try to make it wonderful. If you've never been to Donegal, and maybe always felt you would like to come, or oh, do it. And it doesn't matter in Donegal if it's winter or summer, which is fortunate because during the summer quite often <laughs> it's winter. But you want to be well hopped up in Donegal and you know that feeling you get whenever you're well hopped up and you go on a walk and it's windswept. This is the perfect place in the world for it. Pubs everywhere that sell great pints and great food. Wonderful people, terribly friendly people, terribly helpful people. They've maintained their old worldly charm. 
which isn't easy in this modern age. And here, but especially a bit further north, it's called the Gaeltacht area. And in the Gaeltacht, a lot of people still speak Irish, natural Irish speakers. They speak English too, but that's for another video. We'll go a bit more north to another wonderful part of Donegal around Creaseloch, Gordochart, Falkara, Maharotli Beach, which is spectacular. Another video. You know I didn't mean to make this video. I'll I'll go up that way and I'll not mean to make a video there either, but I will. Fantastic. So I'm going to leave it off there folks, just before I do, I want to thank my brilliant cousins Mags and Alan for allowing me to use their home away from home for these few days, thank you very much, very much appreciated. Alright then, so if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, love you to subscribe, love to hear your comments, but until next time, bye for now.